The first thought that came to my mind is I thought God would have been mad at me. The word repentance, everyone's scared of it, but it's actually, it doesn't mean really what you think it means. And my back is fully healed, my spine is straight, and that really just changed my life forever. And from that point, I gave my life fully to Jesus, and I feel like I'm doing what I was designed to do. What happened is when, when God came into my life, he didn't just say, all right, Jimmy, conform to all these rules right now and do this, even though you don't want to do this. No, it's like, I was known by God and not by men, but your videos, like, it's still an idol in your life, you know? I just want to, like, love people radically and to show them that God is fun and crazy. And Do you believe that there are, just by nature, evil people that exist? This is Jimmy Darts. He's an amazing TikTok and YouTube creator who is in the business of getting people to do kind acts randomly throughout their lives. Give $500 to the first stranger to finish the lyrics to a Christmas song? Rudolph the Red Nose. You know the song? Reindeer. Put $10,000 in a mystery box and sell it for $5? Would you like to buy a mystery box for $5? A mystery box. There could be more than $5 in it or less than $5. You could lose the whole fat book. Yeah, you yes, could sir. lose it. Yeah. All right, okay. no worries. Thank have a good I think you could have an extra dollar. I could get one. Dollar? Yeah. Is it a dollar? Is that how much it is? Yeah. Thank you, man. Here you go. Yeah, thank you so much. Bro. And if they succeed on the kindness test, as he calls it, then he continues to reward them with different gifts. I was actually seeing the first person in the store to sing the song with me, yeah. and it was you. I have $500 for you. What's that gonna cost me? You're kidding. No, I'm not. I don't believe you. This is yours. It's real Yes. Money. You're kidding me, right? No. Really? Yeah? You're gonna buy it? You sure? Yeah. No refunds. $10,000. Yes. So life changer. I just got an apartment. Probably gonna say something to my parents. Oh, for yes, for bro. Thank, thank you. you. Do something fun with your son. Spend it with your boy. Go to Disneyland. Do something like that. That's for you, man. Thank you. You're welcome. God bless you, mom. Thank you. I didn't know much about Jimmy until I watched this podcast the other day. Within the first five to ten minutes, I was blown away by Jimmy's faith and his unabashedness of being a Christian. You have to understand. This podcast is called The Iced Coffee Hour, and it's run by Graham Stephan and his co-host Jack. Graham Stephan is a massive YouTuber on the platform. Millions and millions of subscribers and multiple channels running a ton of different stuff. He talks primarily about the stock market or how to make more money or different tricks and tips about how to succeed financially. And while he's extremely successful on YouTube within this realm, I've never seen him bring up any controversial topics such as politics or religion unless he absolutely has to. So most people would not be as forward and unashamed as Jimmy is here. And it's really an amazing thing to see. Let me show you a few clips from Jimmy's story so you can see exactly what I mean here. Long story short, when I was 18 years old, I went to this party in Minnesota out in the middle of the woods. You know, it's super cold out there, so they have fires, you know, bonfires, people yeah. hang out in the woods. I go out there with these Jesus socks on. I had like a little Jesus on them from Urban Outfitters, like a little statue on sure. the side. And I'm out there, and I'm just messing around, being stupid, whatever, and, and jumping over the fire, like showing off, just doing dumb stuff. And on the way home that night, I was like, oh, crap, my socks have holes in them. My parents are going to find out I've been partying. Like, they don't know that I live this lifestyle. Like, they think I'm, like, this kind of perfect kid. I was so freaked out. And so I sneak up to my room, and I'm like, if I throw my socks away, my mom does the laundry, she'll know there was a pair missing. I was like, I have to think fast. And I don't know why I thought of it, but I literally take my socks off, I'm like, I wasn't drunk or had any drugs that night, nothing. Just completely clear mind, just didn't want her to know I was living that kind of rebellious lifestyle. I was like, Jesus, please, uh, please help my socks, like heal my socks. I hide them in the back of my underwear drawer, go to bed. The next morning I wake up before my mom comes upstairs to do the laundry, grab the socks and they're brand new. Same spot I left them, no holes in them. And I freak out and I'm like, oh my gosh, like... The first thought that came to my mind is I thought God would have been mad at me, wanted me to get caught, wanted me to get in trouble. But as soon as I grabbed those socks, I just felt him speak to me. And he's like, actually, Jimmy, I want to be your friend above everything else. Like, I want to be your friend before anything. And that really impacted me and, and, and really changed my life. Now, later on in the podcast, Jimmy says that he's been going to church his entire life, but he really didn't have a relationship with God and didn't even want to be a part of anything there. But after the sock issue where God heals his socks... He continues on and talks about another physical healing in his life. This guy comes up to me and he goes, hey, Jimmy, can I pray for your, like, scoliosis? I was like, what? Like, pray for 
for me. What are you talking about? He's like, to get healed. And I was like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, I spent my whole life going to doctors, chiropractors, everything. And this gentleman, he goes, all right, look, watch this. I want to pray for you. So I sit down in a chair. He holds my legs out like this. And he goes, watch this. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. And my leg starts shaking and goes straight out to match the length of my other leg. And my back is fully healed. My spine is straight. And that really just changed my life forever. And from that point, I gave my life fully to Jesus. Then Jimmy begins to talk about how he, all of these things are happening in his life and he's starting to surrender to God, but then he still had this old channel that was all about partying and worldly things. And so God asked him to give that up, even though all of his identity was wrapped in that. This is an amazing moment to be able to share how God is changing him moment by moment, especially with non-Christians who he's having this conversation with. Can you surrender your videos? You've given me all these other things, but your videos, like it's still an idol in your life, you know? And that's where I had put all my eggs were in one basket. And I was like, you know what? Like, I don't feel like I would ever be old and regret giving everything to God, surrendering everything. And so I sat there like 18 years old with my videos pulled up, everything. And I was like, dang. He's right. And so I went and deleted everything. As soon as I deleted everything, um, I felt like I, I felt horrible. The first month I felt like I didn't exist. My identity was so in that, was so wrapped up in that. And um, for about a month and a half, I felt horrible. And after that month passed, then I actually felt more known and better than ever. And it was because I was known by God and not by men. And it's not only the parts that Jimmy is speaking about his life that I really, really liked. In fact, there's this one moment in the middle of the podcast that really made me almost get out of my seat. Jack, the show's co-host, asks him this question. So here's a, here's a philosophical question. Yeah. Do you believe that there are just by nature evil people that exist? Like someone that can be born just with like malicious intent or a nefarious person that just wants bad on others. Now, if Jimmy was just a nice person, he would say, yeah, I guess there are some mean people, but most people are really nice, aren't they? But instead, Jimmy decides to bring it back to the topic of Christ by making it a theological conversation. Yeah, I think to answer your question truthfully, I think that's every single one of us. I think we're all born into sin. We're all born selfishly. As soon as you're like two years old, you're stealing your toy from another baby, crying if it's not yours. And we just kind of grow up and live this selfish lifestyle. And eventually, you know, we try to cover that up and, you know, make sometimes make it seem like we're better people this and that but at the end of the day i think the main thing is just really just yeah just surrendering your life like when i when i saw jesus and saw his love for me i was like dang like I've, i'm selfish i live for myself i do all these things for myself like i need to know him and what happened is when when god came into my life he didn't just say all right jimmy conform to all these rules right now and do this even though you don't want to do this no it's like once i got in a place of surrender it felt like he ripped out my heart and gave me a new heart that desired new things it's like my taste buds changed so i desired to live righteous instead of felt obligated to do it you know so it's not like jimmy don't go drink don't do this don't hook up with people it's not it's it's more like I just don't even want to do that. Like you couldn't give me right now fifty thousand dollars to like say a cuss word. Yeah. Like I just I just don't want to do that. I thought the answer that Jimmy gave was more than adequate for this podcast. But every single time that Jimmy is speaking here, you can see that the two co-hosts are glazed over a little bit. They're not super interested in Jimmy's relationship with Christ. And it seems like it's making them quite uncomfortable. I know that this podcast is supposed to be about financial stuff, but they're also supposed to be learning about the guest and just going through what he normally does. When they have other guests on, they're allowed to speak about whatever they want to speak about, and the two of them engage with them and learn more about them. But it seemed like in this podcast, Graham and Jack were almost fighting Jimmy to change the subject into something that would be more interesting to them. We've all done things wrong on a different measure, but at the end of the day, we just need God's love, his forgiveness, and when he does that, he really can do a work in us, you know? I'm going to shift the topic a little yeah. bit. You can see Graham's face here. He's seriously uncomfortable, even making eye contact with the camera, the person behind the camera, and really, like, feeling out the situation, trying to change the subject back to finance. Yeah. Get back to finance. And eventually the conversation comes to Jimmy being on The Price is Right, where he participated as an audience member. We can see the difference in Graham and Jack as they interact with a secular story rather than a religious one. It's pretty obvious here. I was in the crowd and they said, be as crazy as you can. They show the highlights of the prices, right? You know, they say, be as crazy as possible. Like you can't go over the top. Well, they announce my name, you know, they say, come up on stage. And I just start freaking out, going nuts. I get on the stage down there and I'm just like, 
the camera's pacing. I'm like mm -hmm. doing like thumb tricks and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, one dollar and all this stuff. Yeah. And uh, they end up like coming. The producer's like, you got to settle down. Like you're too animated. No yeah, way. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> it doesn't look real. He's like. <laughs> 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 yeah. real. But did it feel real to you? Yeah, like, I mean, I was just loving it. It was just yeah. nuts. But like he's done throughout the whole podcast, eventually Jimmy brings it back to the topic of Christ again. Because it's who he is. It's what he's all about. And it's what has changed his life dramatically. I just want to like love people radically and to show them that God is fun and crazy. And God is the originator and he like creates everything, you know, and the enemy, he just comes and he just, he just changes, um, things that God makes for good and turns them to bad. You know, like, I think that like, yeah, if there's a college frat party down the street and they're doing drugs and it's wild and crazy. I was like, man, I was like, I feel like heaven would have a better party than that. Graham tries to change the subject again. Yeah, Jesus is, he changed my life and it's just, it's amazing, yeah. you know? Do you ever get any haters online? But then Jimmy ends up bringing it back to biblical principles again. Just from, uh, just from biblical principles and reading the Bible, just like, you know, the goal is just never to really live for myself, but just to help other people out and do that. I'm only making videos and doing this because I feel like it's what God called me to. It just feels like, you know, like when you throw a football, it just throws right. But you dribble football, it's all over the place, you know? And I feel like I'm doing what I was designed to do, which is just to meet p awesome people, share their stories, and just ins inspire people to be kind and do that. Like, I don't think this is a political strategy or something that Jimmy is trying to do on purpose, but this is really just who he is as a person christ has made such an impact in him that he can't help but talk about it in every facet of his life romans chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 say this for i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god for salvation to everyone who believes to the jew first and also to the greek for in it the righteousness of god is revealed from faith for faith as it is written the righteous shall live by faith. Jimmy is embodying this verse right now. He's not ashamed even in the least bit. And it's amazing to see that in someone. Second Corinthians also says this, if the good news we preached is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from those who are perishing. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. Just like the parable of the sower, Jimmy here is spreading seed, right? He's trying to show the veiled eyes that there is something amazing here, and yet they seem unimpacted because they just don't get it. They're not even willing to even think about that, not for a moment. And so <laughs> it's really difficult. But do I think that Jimmy should have done anything differently? Probably not. Truthfully, we need more Christian creators like this. I see so many people that I find out are Christian way down the road, and it's just because they don't mention it anywhere. Yes, they may live good lives, and yes, they may evangelize everywhere else, but if you have this stage... Why not use it for the king? I know that Jimmy is not perfect. He's human. But in this instance, it makes me proud to see a brother in Christ do this. Thank you so much to our patrons who helped to keep this channel running. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.